This is going to be the dirtiest Q&A you will ever see me do. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Barely. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? Most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Podcast. This is going to be the dirtiest Q&A you will ever see me do. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see why in a second. Yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Drop a comment below with your greatest question about business, being a three-dimensional businessman, health, relationships, spirituality, whatever it is when it pertains to you as a businessman, drop it below for the chance to be able to get featured on these future episodes. So if you're listening on the podcast, you're going to want to head over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below so that you can ask your questions. So for future episodes, you can get shouted out in front of the community, which is what we're going to do here today. So what do I mean by it being the dirtiest episode, the dirtiest Q&A that you ever see me do? The one thing is it doesn't mean that it's going to be sexual or it's going to be something nasty. What that means is that right now I'm in Austin, Texas. If you've seen the news all over the place, there's been this huge cold front or a polar vortex, which means that I'm in literally sweatpants and a little jumpsuit here that you could see my hair, even though it looks like it's kind of done, I have not taken a shower in four days. Not taking a shower in four days, not because I'm nasty, not because I'm doing a shower fast, yet I haven't done it because there's literally no running water in my house. And I took this opportunity to film this when power was on. We've had rolling blackouts. We've had ice all over the roads. It's been absolutely insane. A lot worse than what it sounds like right now. And I'm inside of my office finally being able to record this video with you guys. So it's going to be the dirtiest episode I've ever done because this will be the longest you will ever see me or hear me without taking a shower. This will be the worst that I'll ever look when it comes to, I haven't washed my face. We have no water whatsoever. It's been absolute chaos. So join in the journey with me and thank you for making it to the dirtiest episode that we'll ever do when it's literally just the beginning of the podcast. So we'll see if we can ever top this again and hopefully we will, but just under different circumstances. Let's go jump in some mud. Let's not go four or five days without any freaking water. So with that, I want to jump into some of the Q&A and take the first question that we have here. I have actually not gone through these questions yet. My team screenshotted them from our community and you'll be able to see them right here. Kyler Williams had the first question, which is how do I develop a story with my brand that keeps people engaged and wanting more? Dream Painting for context. So Dream Painting, sounds like it's a painting company, which is absolutely awesome. So just to repeat the question, how does he develop a story with his brand? So something that makes his brand stand out, that keeps people more engaged and wanting more of what he has. What I love about what he's talking about is this real quick. Ky Kyler, thanks for the question. What I love that you're talking about is that you don't want to come across as a commodity. You don't want to come across as someone who's just another painting company. For the people listening, think about in your industry. You don't want to come across as just another Me Too brand. Someone who does the same exact thing. Oh, I do web design. Great. Like, why do you do web design? Why, why should I work with you? You're just another one. Oh, I'm a realtor. If you ever want to buy a house, buy it for me. We get this all the time. Oh, I sell insurance. It's like, dude, you're like the 50th person in line. I'm not going to buy insurance from you because I don't know you. I don't like you. I don't trust you. Why would I choose you over the people that were here before you? Yet, I remember even when I bought my house here in Austin, I didn't buy it from a realtor I knew. I bought it from someone who referred me that worked his butt off to build the connection with me. And I'm like, I'm going to buy a house from you. And literally within a few short months, I already had my home purchased. He made his commission check. He was on his way. And we're now friends. But all the realtors that said, I'm a realtor, I'm a realtor. If you ever need to buy a house, just let me know. Those were not the people I bought from. So when it comes to building this like brand and this engagement and with people wanting more, it first starts with a story. I remember getting on a phone call actually with a guy who was wanting to get into the Brotherhood Club and he told me, Nicholas, I do digital marketing for e-commerce products. thought, okay, cool. You and freaking tons of other people. I didn't really care. It was not strong. There was no story or brand behind it. So ultimately I was like, yeah, I don't really care. But then he got into this story of talking about how he started an e-commerce business himself. He started marketing it, but then the products weren't that good and he got tons of bad reviews and then they ended up shutting down his company. And the second one, he started another supplement company. It was like a green powder. And he started selling this thing like crazy, $30,000 sold, all these different things. And he didn't tell his merchant account that he was selling physical products, a supplement, a consumable. So he got shut down. And that's when he said, man, like I'm crushing it with marketing these products. I just don't have a good product. What if I took my skills in marketing 
And I brought it out to other companies out there and boom, helped them lift off the ground. Then he started sharing with me different brands that he was able to do that with. I was like, dude, I know exactly why you do what you do. You have a story behind this. I feel like I'm connected to it. And I feel like I understand how to refer people to you. So that's number one. It's like, what are the things like, what is the thing that you discovered that made you go all in on your brand, your product or service? There's usually a mess that you went through before you created the message. There's usually a problem that you went through that you overcame and you created a solution. So tell the story that you had, the epiphany that you had that made you go into the thing that you do now. Because so people will all of a sudden go, dude, I totally understand that. I don't only just understand it. I want to get behind it. Also in the actual get it started, because I know Kyler's in our BDB club, in the get it started section where it's seven days to get started and kick off and get results in seven days, the first one is creating a, a mission and vision statement. There's four different types of stories that I like to tell inside of a brand. Number one's the mission and vision. Where's the place that your company's taking people to? What's the big problem that you're solving in the world? Where you're not just painting, like for us, I'm redefining what it means to be a businessman, changing the dictionary definition where you cannot be a businessman without prospering in health, wealth, and relationships. We're going to take the transformations of our men and use it to consult every major world leader. People are like, holy crap. Do you know what I do though? No. You don't know my product, my service. You just know, man, I want to be a part of that. Why? Because even the guy on the bench wins a Super Bowl ring. People want to be on the winning team. And if you're going somewhere, they'll want to jump on board. The second is telling your story. Like I said, what's the epiphanies that you had? Why did you go into the industry you're into? What struggles did you have that you overcame that they can connect with? The, the third one is going to be your client testimonials. What things did they go through? Did they try to buy from 50 different people and they had bad experiences? Did they buy from someone else and they the product wasn't good? Were they fearful of so many different people not marketing well? Did they not trust other people? Have them share that authentic story, meaning just truthful. You don't want to say, I bought your carpet and now I love it, or I got your paint and I really enjoy it. No, what was the process? What were their emotions? What were they feeling? What bad experiences did they have in the past? And what misconceptions did they have about you? And the last one's epiphany stories. Like, what are the things, what are the parables that you can teach just like Jesus did? He was talking to farmers. So he said, hey, you know, like when a tree, you plant it, it grows, it doesn't bear any fruit, you like rip it up. They're like, yeah. Like, he said, do that with the things in your life that don't bear fruit. They're like, oh my gosh, like I totally get it now. And so it's a way for people to understand things that they don't understand through the things that they do understand. And the last thing that I'll say is just creating a movement. If you can get people connected, feeling like they're a part of something, now all of a sudden they get so much more when they buy into something. Realize that when people buy Gucci, they're not buying Gucci. They're buying into the feeling, the experience, the brand, the community, the prestige. And generally people will always buy things for one of two reasons is this going to increase or decrease my status? Either they'll buy it or they won't based on that. It sounds really shallow. Yet if you start asking yourself, am I buying this thing that's more expensive because it makes me feel like it's increasing my status? How can I get my clients to feel like their status increases when they transfer the money so that they don't feel the decreasing status of having less money? They feel an instant status increase. Well, they'll buy $1,300 shoes and they walk out proud. They're $1,300 less rich, but they got something that they feel like increase their status even more than the $1,300. So think of that, Kyler. Thanks so much for our first question. Uh, question number two here is from Benjamin Joseph Record. Thanks, man, for your question. Have you looked at or tried carnivore um, a month in on 90% only meat? This is a great question. As you guys know, BDB started out as a health company. One of my mentors, Yost Jansen, that we've had in the previous podcast and done amazing trainings with inside of the BDB club, he swears by carnivore. There's amazing people on Instagram that do carnivore exclusively. For the people that don't know, carnivore is basically eating meat only. I remember having one of our teachers come to one of our BDB elite events and we were asking for dietary restrictions. We had one vegan there. So we we're like, okay, he can't eat any meat. We're going to do vegetables. And then this other guy goes, hey, like I'm not eating any vegetables. We're like, all right, like what do you eat? He's like, oh, just meat only said, why? This is 2017, before this was all big. He goes, oh, I'm just trying to detox. Detox? Eating just meat? This guy's eating just vegetables. This guy's eating just meat. He thought vegetables were the devil. So he's been doing this for a long time. He believes that it's one of the best ways to be able to get fit fast. I've had a lot of people say it's a great diet to do in a short amount of time. I will always tell you guys if I have not done something, I have never done carnivore before. I've never experienced it inside of my book, Modern Day Businessman, that you guys can get for free. If you head over to the Facebook group, the Billion Dollar Brotherhood, 
go through the unit section. You guys can check that out once you get there. You get my book for free. I talk about how I eat, which is generally 40% of my calories come from carbs, 30% from protein, 30% from fat. And that's generally how I've eaten before. And then building things with healthy stuff outside of that. Though I do think it's something that's really cool to try. You might as well. So congrats, Benjamin, first off on doing something different with your diet. Carnivore, I would say try it out. Yet I would consult maybe a health expert or a doctor or something like that to cover my tracks. Yet I do know some amazing people that swear by it. I had a great friend, uh, Wallace, who also, I can maybe link him up in the show notes below, who said, man, this is a great elimination diet. You get to know like, what's the things that makes me feel terrible? So when you start introducing stuff back in, you have cheese and all of a sudden you feel terrible, you know, all right, it's not because of this other thing. I have such limited things in my diet that when I have this makes me feel terrible. So Benjamin, congrats again. I've never done it. I think it's something that I would like to do if enough people will do it with me. Cool. Question number three from Marcus, Marcos Zubia. How do you plan your day? I'm sure, assuming that says plan. My business is exploding and I'm finding that appointments are back to back. How do you monitor and prioritize appointments without sacrificing your wealth and people's interest in working with you? Huge question, but awesome question, Marcos, because planning your day is legitimately the most important thing. See, as you get more successful, you're just going to have more and more people pulling at your time and more things that you say no to than you say yes to. So just to clarify some of the things I want to pull out there again, how do you plan your day? But even more than that, his business is exploding and he's finding his, his appointments are back to back, meaning... If you're in back-to-back -back appointments all day, you can't plan your business or figure out how to grow. How do you monitor, prioritize? So how do you figure out what you're doing and prioritize it without sacrificing the money that you make or people's interest working with you? So he doesn't want to miss any opportunities. Generally, this is what I do. Inside the BDB club, I have something called the uh, BDB rituals. Inside of the BDB rituals, this is what they look like. I'm just going to give them to you guys. It everything's based on what our future is. So looking at your 12 month goal, you want to look at how do I break this down quarterly? And ultimately most people can't plan more than three months in advance, especially coming out of 2020, going into 2021. I'm frozen here with no freaking water right now. So it's hard to plan yet in that it's like, all right, one month in the future, or three months into the future, what are the core goals that the company has? What's the core metric, the number one metric that we need to look at if we want to be successful. For us, it's BDB club members. This would be like new customers in a certain product. If this number moves, we're successful. What projects do you have, right? We had this launch of the BDB podcast. Thank you guys so much for helping, subscribing, rating, reviewing, sharing. This is something that's been a focus for us. So we know these are main, main projects that we're working on before we even get into the daily rituals or the daily plan. So we have a filter, kind of like if you go on car gurus, I'm sure you guys have been there before. Car gurus, you put in like what year, what make, what model, what zip code, and all of a sudden it like filters out all these different results so that out of all the options, it limits them right away. So ultimately, we have about four things that four projects going on at any given time that we want to make sure that anything that comes on our calendar aligns with that or else it gets pushed back. So that is the filter that we're looking through. You wanted to figure out what that is for your company that's going to move the needle forward the most in the current goals that you have for the year the quarter, the monthly, the week, the day. Now, how do we actually do that daily? We do the B2B ritual. We start off with gratefulness. I just found it's it's easy to look at problems. So when you look at gratefulness, it just gets us in a good frame of mind. I've had times where I felt depressed and legitimately just writing down gratefulness for three days in a row changed everything. Number one is gratefulness. Second is intention. What's the focus of the day? What's the intention? What's the overall theme? A lot of times for me, I'll say, just focus on the calendar or get these things done or show up powerfully. Things that are like, all right, this is the theme of the day. Number three is I generally like to look at my calendar, see what's on the calendar for the day so I can see the appointments and I can start scheduling in between that. The next thing is I look at those core focuses that we have and I say, man, like what's the active things that I can do to help move this needle forward today? And I start plugging into do's and one of my great friends inside the BDB club again, um, Brandon Poole, and he has an amazing 10 step sheet that he did a training of 10 activities that he wants to do. And he actually gets them in order, writes down 10 things and knocks them out in order. Doesn't work on two at the same time. It's insane. So I start plugging those things in my calendar. And that way, the next day, when I do this again, I could see what I got done, what I didn't get done. Am I making progress towards my goal? So that is the way that I do things. And then the overarching theme is 
if I'm planning for a live event, I won't get on a phone call with somebody who just wants to network. Like, listen, dude, if it's not contributing to the live event right now, I just don't do it. I don't talk about it. I'm not going to waste my time doing it. Amanda knows this really, really well is there's times where she's like, Hey, I want to talk to you about this. And like, Hey, I have all these other things that are higher priority right now. So because of that, I'm not going to get my mind even thinking about that until these things are done. And setting those boundaries is what creates massive success instead of a little bit of success. Cause when we get distracted, just doing activities, we end up going after putting 80% of our time into producing 20% of the results and 20% of our time into 80% of the results. Imagine if you just put more time into the things that produce those results. So Marcos, great freaking question. And I believe we have one more person and then I want to choose you. So make sure on YouTube, go to the comment section, drop your question below about what it means to be a three-dimensional businessman. What's the thing that you want your question answered on this podcast, on the YouTube show, would love to do it in the live stream. Jason Boyd. Also, Jason, shout out. Welcome to the BDB club. I think since then he's joined the club. So congrats. Those selling insurance, which I do not. Patrick Bed David does. So go check him out. What's your go-to for booking appointments? I usually don't struggle on the phones, but this week had been tough. Also doing a virtual sales day tomorrow. What advice would you have for someone who needs a connection in person to sell? I find it harder on the phone to connect than in person. So he has two kind of questions. How do I book appointments for selling insurance? And how do I really get fe the feeling of being confident and getting my message across when it comes to virtual? So we all know that sitting one-to-one -one in person or one-to-many in person is the most effective way to sell. Yet oftentimes people a lot, like to do a lot of sales appointments on the phone. That's amazing. Yet if you want a higher converter, you could jump straight to Zoom. So based on the insurance Jason, I'm not the insurance guy yet to give a stab at what you're asking right now. So one of the best ways is through LinkedIn right now, generating leads through LinkedIn with insurance. The other thing that I would say is how do you become an educator? I remember when I interviewed Jay Abraham, that's actually on the YouTube channel. I interviewed Jay and he talked about these three different phases that you take people through to create a client relationship, not a customer, but a client underneath your protection. Step number one is educating them. There's people out there that are searching for insurance. So if you put out the right content that people are searching for, they're going to see you as the guy that they learn the information from, which is a huge rapport builder. Number two, if they see that they need insurance and they listen to you, they'll probably want to know what's the best thing for them. So now you can help people instead of trying to sell them your insurance, help people. What's the best thing for them? Maybe it's not you. You become a broker. Whether it's you, YouTube, or someone else, you don't care. You just care that they get their results. So step number two is to clarify with them what is the best insurance for them, what's going to create the best results for them until you guys both see it. Now, if they see that you're the best person and you see it, that's where it's your moral obligation to close as hard as humanly possible. So that's step number one. It's like creating the content that people are searching for so that you can take them from the educated person to the connected person to the person that you guys have solved their problem together. So they get the very best thing for them, even if it's not you. I think LinkedIn's an amazing place for that. I think YouTube's an amazing place for that since it can also be used on Google. Writing blogs and stuff like that is a phenomenal place to be able to start. Now, outside of that, because I believe those are great strategies for increasing your network, going to networking events. Think about it. Everyone needs insurance. So at this point, you're just looking for people that are in the market for insurance and that you want to be the person that's educated them and helped them the most. So they go straight to you, just as I talked about earlier on the podcast when it came to the realtor. That guy helped me where I was at. So I bought from him and he maybe made 16 grand for very little work. He helped a ton, yet it wasn't a multiple year sales cycle. The next thing is how to build that connection. I think over virtual, I don't think about it. I know for sure that when it comes to virtual, going to video is definitely very, very helpful. The next thing is just sticking to the script when it comes to the call, using it, treating it the same exact way. I thought that even with her holding a virtual event, which we've done many now, you should check them out. BDBlive.com is one of them. After holding these virtual events, I thought, man, this can be so different. Yet I felt the energy of seeing the people on the other side of the screen. So one is setting the expectation before they get on that call. In person, people can't get distracted. Right? It's rude. Yet on the, on the phone or on Zoom or something like that, they could get distracted. So set the tone. Hey, you're going to want to show up on time, pen and paper, give them some things before they show up. When they show up, build the rapport right off the bat and then set the tone. Hey, the purpose of this meeting is to do this. Give them the purpose of the meeting. 
and stick to the script. Use that camera as another way to be able to see facial expressions, to be able to listen to their tonality, be able to see their posture. Yet that way that you're not just going phone because there's just less rapport building when it comes to the phone. So that's what I would do right now when it comes to a virtual sales day is do them via Zoom and roll the punches. Right now, if you're not able to meet with people in person, stop thinking about meeting people in person. I stopped dwelling about it. Like, yeah, we'd all like to be able to shake everyone's hand every single day and not even have to travel. But I'm not going to complain about that because it's just not reality right now. So instead of worrying about, man, this is how it used to be, start thinking about how you can master the new way of being able to do things. Maybe you can start getting more people on a virtual call together to educate them and help them out. Maybe you can own that ability to be able to book someone to become a qualified lead and get someone else to do that process for you so that you can just do the closing. So Jason, thank you for the last question. I appreciate all four of those questions coming in. Again, these are taken from our YouTube channel in the comments below. We're going to screenshot them. You're going to get uh, put it on this big screen here inside the office. And we're going to shout you out in front of the community because we're grateful for the question. It helps so many people. These were phenomenal. They're fun for me as well. I love being Coach Nicholas here today. So make sure to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring that bell. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to all the people that have reviewed the Billion Dollar Brotherhood podcast so far. I'm looking right now in the first 48 hours, we had 73 five-star reviews inside the Brotherhood. So I want to give a shout out. You can actually see them all right here. I want to scroll through and just say thank you. Look how freaking crazy this is. Ah, uh, this is so fire. This is crazy. I haven't even read every single one of these. I'm going through them right now. Always valuable, the bottom right. Nicholas has his fingers on the pulse of everything. He has vision and brings value and amazing content to every conversation. Love this podcast and his work. Croyster, thank you so much. Max E. B. Uh, live a more meaningful life. The messages and insights that you will get in this podcast are not only applicable in business, but in many, if not all areas of life. If you listen, apply what you hear, you will see a massive transformation in your life. Uh, JP Medlin, thanks, man. I appreciate you for writing a review. It's freaking awesome. Five-star review from him. Nicholas, no nonsense and practical approach to coaching is exactly what I need to begin my transformation from a want-to-be to a legit three-dimensional businessman. Thank you so much, man. Live in the dream too. Thank you, Channing Gardner, Kean, Kyle Tolzman. Thank you guys so much. Chris Gordon, I appreciate it. Rags to Richard, thank you guys so much. Izzy, dude, thank you. I appreciate it. Stephen Leapley, uh, Tyler Cerny, uh, Justin Stevens. I appreciate you guys for leaving those reviews. I'm going to go through more of them on every single episode. So if you have not written your five-star rate and review, give us that five-star rate and review. Go get it done. I would love to read it out here on the podcast. I'm going to be going through every single one of these, picking a few out every single episode just to say thank you guys so much because without you, it shows nothing. I'm just one guy in a badass studio talking to a badass camera, talking about great stuff. Yet, I want to make sure that we're reaching the most amount of people possible. And the only way we can do that is by one, impacting you, where it's like, this is the best show ever. And number two, it's from having you share it, subscribe, rate, review, so that iTunes can rank us up until we are number one. We are not stopping. Not even four days without a shower can stop me. Not even the dirtiest episode on the planet can stop me. Not even the fact that right now we're heating up the house as hot as, hot as we can before the power goes out. So it's like 100 degrees in here and I'm sweating like crazy. Nothing's going to be able to stop us. Nothing can stop you from writing that review. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Switch Code. Thank you, Southern Surfer. Thank you, uh, B. Goring. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys on the next episode.